don't believe the niggas. He didn't say anything about any of these white boys. And none of these white boys function like that. And Kemp is one of the best painters in the game. Stop. And Kemp hurt people, hurt people, but I am a hurt person. They never hurt people. And he does it all the time. This one and that one and this one. Cat Williams recently dropped by Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast, and let me tell you, he spilled all the tea. This episode went on for like three hours, and Cat was straight up on fire. No filter whatsoever. He threw shade at Steve Harvey, Michael Blackson, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show, there being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? is and of course cat couldn't resist taking a swipe at kevin hart he pretty much called him an industry plant and claimed he fibbed about how he made it big in the comedy scene these two have been going at each other for ages throwing jabs online and in interviews it's like a never-ending drama of celebrity feuds now here's the kicker dave chappelle warned cat about calling out fellow black comedians in the past and here back again to let cat know that he won't just get away with what he's doing so the very first thing that is relevant to this whole cat williams story is the way in which cat went after kevin Kevin Hart. It basically set off an entire chain of events that is going on to this very day and will be going on for many more. What caused it and why did he do it? Well, it seems like Cat Williams finally lost it completely and he had to let out all of the anger that he's been holding inside for years and years. The wild history of Kevin Hart and Cat Williams began a long time ago and these two comedy giants have been throwing punches at each other for almost a decade. From Cat's controversial comments to Kevin's strategic comebacks, the comedy world has become their battleground. Picture this. Cat Williams went all out, not just taking shots at Kevin Hart, but also throwing shade at athletes like Shaquille O'Neal, trying their hand at comedy. This feud was already heating up back in August 2014. It's like an everlasting saga of comedic clashes that's been keeping us entertained for years. I think that Shaq and Russell Simmons should get out of comedy and stay in their lane. They don't see us making a league of professional basketball players under six foot. So what qualifies these dudes because they got a hundred million dollars to come over in comedy and do Shaq's all-star game? Get out of here, you bum. That's right. Before I take the rest of you girls. <laughs> like you took Kevin Hart from me. <laughs> I want my bitch back. Then, for two years, Kat's been cold turkey. But all of that changed in February 2016, when things were reaching another boiling point between Cat Williams and Kevin Hart. During his conspiracy theory tour stop in Atlanta, Cat didn't hold back, straight up calling Kevin Hart a puppet. This made headlines, as reported by Vibe. Cat was adamant that he earned his stripes in the comedy game and wasn't afraid to take a swipe at Hart. He even said, if Hart's a puppet, that ain't his fault. Cat urged people not to hate on a fellow black man hustling, even if he wasn't and everyone's favorite flavor. But Cat didn't stop there. He compared himself to other black comedians, emphasizing that just because some think he's the best, it doesn't mean he's dissing the others. He used analogies, like getting mad at Kermit the Frog when you should be upset with Jim Henson, or saying, forget Mickey Mouse, when it's really Walt Disney you should be mad at. Cat had a way with words, no doubt about it. I've already proven that if the best they got in comedy is Kevin Hart, don't you boo a black man working hard, baby. Even if that N is a puppet, it's not his fault. We don't get mad. Just because I'm better than some black dudes doesn't mean I'm better than no black dudes. I'm saying if you want to be mad at Kermit the Frog, don't be mad at Kermit the Frog. Be mad at Jim Henson. Don't say F Donald Duck when you really mean F Walt Disney. Now here's how Kevin Hart responded. He didn't go all out attack, but he dropped a more subtle response on Instagram. He shared a pic from the 2016 Academy Awards, chilling with comedy heavyweights Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock. In his post, he talked about how comedians should stick together and have each other's back. He highlighted the shared grind it takes to reach the level of success that only a few comedians achieve. So, amidst all the drama, this was Kevin Hart's way of reminding everyone that comedians gotta support each other, even when there's a feud brewing. Me and Dave Chappelle with our brother Chris Rock tonight at the Oscars. True professionals understand the importance of sticking together and supporting one another. At the end of the day, we are comedians, and there aren't many that make it to the level that we have made it. But so many doors are open from the success of one comedian, and when you see those doors open, you then have the opportunity to walk through them. It's about helping one another, not trying to tear each other down. The insecure
insecure ones will never understand support and encouragement 2016 saw yet another blow for blow between these two comedians. Williams turned up the heat in his never-ending feud with Kevin Hart later that year as he was setting the stage for his conspiracy tour show in Philly on March 5th. Cat had a plan, and it was all about stirring up some drama right in Hart's hometown. He threw down a hefty challenge, daring the ride-along star to a $5 million bet. In his own words, he said, I've seen your stuff on social media, and I know what you do, but you do it for fun. If you're serious about it, here's the deal, Kevin. See, I've seen your stuff on social media. Boy, boy, I know you what you do, but you do it for play play. If you do it for real, here it is, Kevin. I got a show at your hometown in Philly. I'm going to take my special there. On that stage, we can put whatever you want. A full court basketball court, a boxing ring, two microphones for a rap cypher, or you can get your ass dusted in comedy on that stage. But it's $1 million up for each one. The cat didn't hold back, laying out challenge options, a full court basketball game, a boxing match, a rap cypher with two mics, or the big one, a comedy face-off right on stage with a million dollars on the line for each challenge. And he made sure to mention Hart's Forbes earnings and hinted that he'd bring his cash in person. But here's the kicker. He told Hart not to bring any white folks along if he wasn't a puppet. All of this while rocking that signature fur coat of his. For a moment though, it seemed to everyone as if Cat had a little change of heart. You see, in March 2016, Cat Williams switched gears during an appearance on V103 Atlanta's The Big Tigger Show. He stepped up and offered an apology to Kevin Hart for the harsh comments he had dished out during his comedy tour stop in Philly. And I should have never mentioned Kevin Hart's name. That is the reigning king of comedy if you ask for popular consensus. So okay. now the fact that he's a black man like me and the fact that I attacked him with such vitriol at a time when um, our country is already divided in every way it could be divided, mm -hmm. racially, politically, uh, economically, socially, religiously. Like the fact that I, while being on stage pretending to be higher than that, would then stoop down to the same level and try to um, embarrass Kevin Hart in front of his children and loved ones after mm. all the hard work he's done since the year 2002 is just regrettable on my part. So I humbly apologize to not only Kevin Hart, but Heartbeat Productions, the Plastic Cup Boys, and anybody associated with Kevin Hart. Cat recognized the shared experiences they both had as black men and expressed remorse for going after Hart with such intensity, especially during a time when the country was already divided. During his chat with the host, Cat admitted that it was regrettable for him to try to embarrass Hart while doing his set. He made a genuine apology not just to Kevin Hart, but also to Heartbeat Productions, the Plastic Cup Boys, and anyone connected to Kevin Hart. It seemed like a moment of reflection and an attempt to patch things up during that radio appearance. Then once again, two years flew by and we didn't see any hate between Kat and Kevin publicly. But in September of 2018, things got more interesting in the Hart Williams showdown. The spotlight shifted to Tiffany Haddish when Williams, during an interview on V103's Frank and Wanda in the morning, started taking jabs at her comedy skills and questioned if she could pull off a major tour. Kevin Hart wasn't one to bite his tongue. While promoting their movie Night School on The Breakfast Club, he went to bat for Tiffany Haddish and didn't hold back in dissing William. Frustrated, Hart called out Williams for blaming Hollywood and the white man instead of owning up to his own actions when he had a chance to shine. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. Cat was in that position at one you point. You were the guy. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You off promo shoots. You off your pro uh, trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios Why was he a risk? He chose drugs. Oh. Okay. Take responsibility for what you chose and say, you know what, I got to fix me and I'm going to come back and I'm going to stand up for comedy. Hart spilled the beans that studios stopped working with Williams because of drug issues and he hammered home the point that Williams had the chance to be a star but didn't deliver when it counted. Hart straight up challenged Williams, asking if he ever used his platform to help out those coming up in the game. According to Hart, since Williams hadn't done that, he had no business criticizing those who were making waves in the industry. The tension just kept on simmering between these two comedians. The friction came about yet again three years ago, in September 2021, and the Hart-Williams saga was still going strong. Cat Williams didn't hold back when it came to the possibility of a comedy-style battle against Kevin Hart. During an interview with Baltimore radio personnel, 
personality Persian Nicole, as reported by Revolt, Williams made it clear that he considered it cheating for him. With confidence, Williams boldly claimed that he could outshine Hart in a comedy battle, boasting about his extensive catalog of over 10 comedy specials. He even threw in a cheeky twist, saying he could pluck just two jokes from each special, basically making the competition look dead in the water, except for those with the last name prior. So Kat, let me ask you, uh, if you would be bothered enough, because I know you're normally very unbothered, to do a versus battle between uh, you and Kevin Hart. A lot of fans want you to do it for the culture, do a comedy battle. Uh, would you be bothered enough to do this? I started versus. Oh, come on, come I on. come to me with versus. The first versus ever promoted was Steve Harvey versus Cat Williams. It was the underground king of comedy versus and, and and sold as verses. So we don't need to ask me if I would have any interest in things that I am the originator of. Comedically beefing is my lane. It's almost cheating for me. I have over 10 specials, so I don't have to pick but two jokes from each special, and I've already deaded anybody whose last name ain't prior anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> having thrown that out the window, we don't we, we don't want to add 52 movies. We certainly don't want to add 11 specials. We certainly don't want to add 49 television appearances. We don't want to add an Emmy. It's almost a battle we can't really afford to be in. Williams brushed off the idea of piling up Hart's impressive stats. 52 movies, 11 specials, 49 TV appearances, and an Emmy. He wrapped it up by hinting that this matchup might not go down as expected and that it could be a battle people couldn't afford to miss. The comedic rivalry between Hart and Williams, well, it was alive and kicking to say the least. And then came the famous Club Shay Shay podcast. Just a few weeks back, Cat Williams didn't mince words as he took on Kevin Hart during a chat on Shannon Sharp's show. The cat's on drugs. Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five sons. Why would we tell these ridiculous stories? Because it's com competition. On January 3rd, during that episode, Williams went after various comedians, with Hart squarely in his sights. Cat even floated the idea that Hart might be some creation of the industry. The verbal sparring between these two comedians kept rolling during that podcast. Podcast. In response to Cat Williams' jabs on Shannon Sharp's show, Kevin Hart didn't write an essay. He kept it short and sweet on the platform formerly known as Twitter, now called X. Gotta get that anger up out of you, champ. It's honestly sad. A day later, Kevin Hart popped up on ESPN's NBA Unplugged and decided to have some fun at Cat Williams' expense. He playfully teased Cat, poking holes in some of the wild claims Williams made on the podcast, like reading 3,000 books a year when he was just a kid between 8 and 12. Look at how to play basketball from reading all them books. <laughs> 3,000 of them. 3,000 yeah. a year. A, a year. And, that's yeah. two a day. Yeah. That's six years old. That's two a day. <laughs> Who knew? The, he was so voracious. At the age seven, he got accepted <laughs> to the, the, I think it was Delaware University. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never made public news. No. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest secret. The biggest secret in the world. Many people tend to side with Cat more often than not, believing he might be onto something by exposing all the messy, dark truths that Kevin Hart has been keeping hidden away in his closet. But the thing is, Cat Williams wasn't just sick of Kevin Hart. Cat wasn't holding back when others came into play either. He went on a verbal rampage, exposing all of the industry's dirty secrets and putting other comedians in his crosshairs too. Cat Williams didn't pull any punches, calling out anyone who had ever talked negatively about him. His revelations weren't limited to fellow comedians. Chris Tucker found himself in Cat Williams' line of fire. Williams claimed that Tucker wasn't the same old Chris we all knew, but rather some Epstein version of himself. But Cat Williams wasn't finished. During that same interview with Shay, Cat took a shot at Ricky Smiley, calling him out as a liar and criticizing his acting skills. This feud began because Smiley claimed he was initially cast for the role of Money Mike in Friday After Next. Williams wasn't having it and straight up called it a lie. Thank y'all for this opportunity, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, just get into this. Uh, the whole uh, internet going crazy. Uh, comments that Cat Williams made. Uh, whatever. I can't speak on behalf of the other comedians, but the only thing I can speak for is myself. Uh, Cat made some comments on Shannon Sharp's show about uh, when I was on uh, Shannon Sharp was telling him the story of some of the behind the scenes from Friday after next. 
Let's start. Let's start with that. Smiley didn't take it lying down and addressed Williams on his own show, sticking to his story about the role. He also clarified that the pimp angle for the character was added once Williams took the part. Despite all this, Smiley didn't harbor any grudges against Cat Williams. Next up was Cedric the Entertainer, whom Cat Williams accused of being a liar too. According to Cat, Cedric stole a joke from him that he performed back in 1998 on BET's Comic View. Williams claimed that Cedric essentially copied that stolen joke and used it in the 2000 film The Original Kings of Comedy, changing just one word. Even though Cedric denied the accusation, Williams stuck to his guns, stating that both Cedric and Steve Harvey had privately apologized for the alleged joke theft. Williams claimed he let it slide for over a decade, but decided to speak out when Cedric denied it in 2022. Lastly, Cat Williams had strong opinions about Kevin Hart supposedly selling his soul to the bigwigs controlling the entertainment industry. He hinted at the old Old rumor that black male entertainers in Hollywood are pressured into wearing a dress in a movie before they can reach higher levels of fame. This idea, once seen as a conspiracy theory, gained more attention as various comedians and actors spoke about their experiences with it. Dave Chappelle, for instance, has been vocal about refusing to wear a dress in movies and even turned down a $50 million deal from Comedy Central in 2006 because of it. He made it clear during an appearance on Oprah that he wouldn't compromise on such matters. Cat Williams' interview laid bare his candid and controversial view views on his fellow comedians and the inner workings of the entertainment industry. Dave Chappelle is an insightful one, and he spoke about many dangers that lie in the lair of the industry. You didn't do nothing wrong? I'm gonna bring a f black guy, a cat, that this is me. He, cat was talking about s**t that niggas did to other niggas, but not about anything that he did to him. If I told my story, it would break your heart. I lost everything and never Ever told on anybody. Dave Chappelle ain't vibing with Cat Williams' recent viral interview where he dissed some fellow comedians. Chappelle went on stage at the Hollywood Improv's Mondaray's event and called out Williams for taking shots at Ice Cube and Kevin Hart on the Club Shay Shay podcast. Even Saturday Night Live got in on the references. Williams didn't spare Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey in his rants on Club Shay Shay. Now, Chappelle, who usually keeps a tight no cell phone policy during his sets, had bits of his Williams comment Terry making the rounds on social media. He's like, what's going on here? Cat went in on everyone. Not a word about the white boys, though. They don't roll like that. Doing a cat impression, Chappelle said, screw this one, screw that one. And he's like, hold up. Did he actually do something wrong? Cat was talking about things people did to each other, not stuff done to him. Chappelle got real, saying, if I spilled my story, it would break your heart. I lost everything but never snitched on anyone. And now this guy's the truth teller? Cat, I respect you. But tell me, DeRay, which part of the game messes up another guy's hustle? What game involves snitching on your own? Chappelle's scratching his head, wondering why Williams would call out his peers when we're all just trying to level up. Dave appears to have a mixed reaction to Cat Williams' recent viral interview where Williams criticized fellow comedians. Chappelle expressed disapproval during his appearance at the Hollywood Improv's Mondaray's event, questioning Williams' decision to call out the black entertainers in the industry. Chappelle, known for his no-cell phone policy during sets, pointed out the absence of criticism towards white comedians and emphasized that Cat seemed to be focusing on the negative actions of others without addressing any wrongs committed against him personally. While expressing respect for Cat Williams, Dave did raise concerns about the impact of Williams' words on others' livelihoods, questioning the ethics of jeopardizing another person's success in the entertainment industry. The comedian's comments suggest a disagreement with Williams' approach and a belief that, in the comedy game, there should be a sense of unity and support among peers striving for success. Dave Chappelle dropped a few truth bombs on Cat Williams' viral interview. It's like a comedy showdown with some real talk thrown in. Chappelle ain't holding back, questioning the game and wondering why Kat's calling out fellow comedians? In the end, it's a mix of respect and disagreement. Chappelle's asking, what part of the game is this? And pointing out the importance of supporting each other in the comedy hustle. It's like a behind-the-scenes glimpse into the complexities of the comedy world. Guess we'll have to stay tuned to see if this sparks more drama, or if it's just another chapter in the comedy saga. Keep those laughs coming, and let the stand-up games continue.